Well, our special guest on left, right and centre tonight is CPM General Secretary Sita Ram Yechuri, who is emerging as a key opposition player ahead of the 2019 general elections. Mr. Yechuri has recently fought and won a very important battle within his own party, vis-a-vis -vis what kind of line the party should tow with the Congress party. He has also been instrumental in the impeachment motion that was moved by opposition parties against the Chief Justice Deepak Mishra. Mr. Yechuri joining us on NDTV this evening. Mr. Yechuri, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me first talk to you about that battle within your own party uh, regarding the, the, uh, the line to take with the Congress party. Ultimately, uh, you know, you had your way. There is more flexibility now within the party on how to deal with the Congress. You won't go in for an alliance with the Congress, uh, but you are open to an understanding to defeat quote-unquote communal forces. Uh, can you tell us how difficult it was That's to right. convince the naysayers in your party about that? There was a lot of skepticism, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, I mean, I don't know what sort of feelings and skepticism that was there outside of the party. Inside of the party, we are used to a very, very vibrant inner party democracy. We have, we have where often, we have uh, contending views that come up and they are discussed threadbare and then we come to a conclusion. And that's exactly what happened at this party congress. They were contending views and we came to a conclusion and that conclusion is exactly what you summed up just now. And, and that is the conclusion we came to. So that is our party's internal mechanism, which I think is very healthy in, uh, in a democracy. And we are proud that we are probably the only party in the country that practices such levels of internal democracy. But now that the line has been decided by the party congress, that is what is going to be implemented by the party for the next three years till we meet in the next congress. But Mr. Yatri, we know that Mr. Prakash Karat in particular was uh, was opposed to this line of thinking. Uh, he, he actually didn't want any kind of understanding with the Congress. And even though, yes, the party Congress has made a decision now, uh, going forward, how how would you address that internally within the party? Are you not worried at all uh, that you know those differences may come to the fore again? Have those differences with Mr. Karat completely been settled on this issue? You see, the, the method that we work, we work along with is that whatever be the differences, they are thrashed out in the party fora. Once they are thrashed out in the party fora and we come to a definitive conclusion, it is on the basis of that conclusion that the entire party moves as a single person. And that is what it should be in the future and I'm sure that is what it will be in the future. What do you think, though, is the state of, uh, you know, the opposition strategy vis-a-vis -vis the BJP right now, Mr. Yechuri? Because there seem to be very different schools of thought emerging. Uh, your party has taken a clear line that yeah. it's pretty much ready to do whatever it takes to keep the BJP out. There's been talk also of, uh, of a non-Congress, non-BJP front, which Mr. KCR has talked about. He's met Mamta Banerjee on that, etc. Uh, do you think there's too much confusion right now in the opposition on ranks on what the strategy should be, who the face should be, or is it too early? Well, first of all, we have decided that our primary objective is to oust this BJP RSS government. Now, how do you go about doing that? I think all of us need to once again go back to understanding the Indian reality. <clears throat> talks about various fronts, various issues, various alliances will naturally come in the run-up to the election. But please remember, what has been our experience? In India, there is no national monolithic electoral formula. Indian elections are the summation of specifics. They are different regional parties that have different degrees of influence in different parts of the country. Now, various uh, arrangements are made there in these regions. And once the elections are over, then those who agree with the objective of keeping the communal forces away from government get together. And that is why, remember, in 1996, when the United Front formed the government, the United Front itself was formed after the election. In 2004, when Dr. Manmohan Singh became the Prime Minister, the UPA was formed after the elections. So but there's will that no pre-election pre personality like Mr. Modi, front, when uh, people are given a choice between Narendra Modi and his personality on one hand, and a sort of a uh, you know a loose opposition coalition on the other, with no certainty on what shape that will take, will that work? Would you, 
Will you tell me honestly, uh, Nidhi, whether in 2004 you thought that Dr. Manmohan Singh will be the Prime Minister? Did no, he not take on Mr. the mighty uh, Vajpayee? Yeah, did he not take on the mighty Vajpayee? Did, did anybody in the country think, when we were in, in our younger days, when we were fighting emergency, that Muraji Desai would be the country's Prime Minister defeating the mighty Indira Gandhi? So you believe the Understand shape of the, the opposition alliance Indian, will only, Indian, Indian. only take place after the election or, or should take place Understand after the election? The un <laughs> Yeah, understand the values of Indian democracy and the greatness of our own people. They have the maturity, they have uh, their wisdom, they'll vote accordingly, and I'm sure you'll see the difference in 2019. Mr. Yachri, let's talk about the impeachment motion as well. There's been a lot of criticism from uh, eminent jurists as well, like Fali Nariman and others, about the way uh, this impeachment motion was done. Uh, Fali Nariman called it a black day uh, for the judiciary. He was completely against it. Uh, so I'm not even asking you about the BJP's criticism, but what about the criticism of someone like him uh, on this impeachment motion and whether well, uh, I... it just wasn't thought through? No, no, you see, the whole point is very clear, Nidhi. I mean, this is something that happened in, in January this year. We are talking four months down the line. At that point of time, when the issue came up of certain apprehensions that were raised by the four senior most judges, it was clear that all everything was not hunky-dory in the highest judiciary. And if there were any problems that had to be settled, we said if the judiciary cannot settle it, that is what I had said then, we'd want the judiciary to settle it. If the judiciary cannot settle it, then it's the collective responsibility of the executive and the legislature, that is the two other wings of our democracy, to collectively restore the dignity and integrity of the judiciary. Now the only way the legislature has to intervene there is through an impeachment motion. Now the point at issue is Mr. Nariman knows fully he was a member of that uh, one of the committees of three that were appointed on an earlier occasion when the only successful impeachment motion in India's history was ever carried through in the Raj Sabha that was moved by me. That impeachment motion, a three-member committee, Mr. Nariman was a member of the three-member committee. They examined the, char the basis of filing of the impeachment motion, came to the conclusion that it is sustainable, and then only the motion was admitted. The motion is admitted after this committee of three consisting of a sitting Supreme Court judge, a sitting High Court Chief Justice and an eminent jurist, goes through the entire material, calls the concerned judge, takes their opinion and then comes but to a reasoned opinion. But here it was rejected by the opinion. Rajasabha chairman right away. Why do you think he did that? That, that, itself, I, that, itself, that itself I think is very, very improper. I have said so. According to the Raj Sabha rules, according to the constitution, once the number of requisite number of MPs are there and these are valid signatures, then it must be sent for examination to this committee. Without the opinion of that committee, which says whether it is tenable or not, whether prima facie it is acceptable or not, I don't think such a decision should, should have arrived at. But it's of course the uh, office of the Honorable Vice President of India and the Chairman of the Raj Sabha that, so uh, that has gone through how that. How soon, Mr. Yetri, but will, that will all as of you may. approach the Supreme Court uh, uh, against his decision? Because that is I'm in sorry. the works. Where, how soon will that happen? Well, well, that, well that, is up to, that is up to the members who've signed it because by the time all this was happened, I'm no longer a member of the parliament. So I said it's left to the MPs to use their wisdom and decide upon the course, and I'm sure they will. I'm, I'm sure they will. All right, Mr. Yetri, it's good to talk to you after a long time uh, on, on both uh, what you feel the opposition's you, strategy possibly could be ahead of the next general election, also on this impeachment motion that continues to be a, a big story. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it on Left, Right and Centre tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye.